Hello, in this screencast, I'll walk through how to generate an access token manually using JWT grant authentication. Note that all values, email addresses, keys, secrets, tokens, and other personal information you might see are for demo purposes only and have been deleted or revoked. Access tokens are needed to make calls to DocuSign APIs. To follow along with this video and get an access token, you will need to have these things first. An integration key. You can create a new integration key using the Add App and Integration Key button in your Apps and Keys page. A redirect URI for your integration key. To add a redirect URI, go to your Apps and Keys page, select Actions and then edit for the app you want to work with. Scroll to Additional Settings and select Add URI. An RSA key pair. To add an RSA key pair, in the same app configuration page, scroll to Service Integration, then select Generate RSA. After you create an RSA key pair, you are shown its public and private key values. Copy both of these keys to a safe location. You will not be able to view these values again through the DocuSign UI later, although you can create new RSA keys if needed. Once you have ensured that you have an integration key, a redirect URI, and an RSA key pair, you can begin the process of getting an access token. The first step is to obtain consent from the user that your app will impersonate. You only need to get consent once. If your user has already consented, you can skip this step. Construct a URI value that directs a user's browser to give consent for your app to make API calls on their behalf. The URI value includes a base path for the DocuSign authentication service. Note that this path changes depending on whether the app is in the development environment or in production. I'm using the base URI for the development environment in this example. A response type. For this example, set the value to code. A list of scopes that your app needs, separated by spaces. You must request the impersonation scope for JWT grant and, Typically, you would also request the signature scope to access the eSignature REST API. You will also need your app's integration key to add for the client ID parameter. And, finally, a redirect URI that matches one of those configured for your app. Once you've built the consent request URI, you can open it in the browser. If you haven't already provided consent, this will open a window prompting you to log in and grant impersonation and signature permissions to your app. Log in and choose Allow Access. After you allow access, your browser will be sent to your redirect URI. Next, build a JWT token to exchange for an access token. You can optionally use online tools or sites to help you construct a JWT, but this should only ever be done for learning the process and testing keys. Passing real credentials onto a third-party site is a security risk. A JWT token contains three JSON blocks that are RS-256 encoded and are separated by period characters. These include the header, which specifies the algorithm used to encode the JWT and the type. For DocuSign authentication, the algorithm should be RS-256 and the type should be JWT. The body, which contains your app's claims. The body payload should hold. An ISS claim, which contains your app's integration key value. A subclaim, which contains the user ID of the user your app will impersonate. An AUD claim, which, for your developer environment, should be account-d.docusign.com. An IAT claim, which is the current date and time in Unix Epoch format. An EXP claim, which is the expiration date of the JWT assertion in Unix Epoch format. For this example, add 10,000 to the value of IAT for this value. A list of scopes that your app will claim. You should claim the impersonation scope when using JWT grant, and the signature scope is used for e-signature API calls. Finally, each JWT has a signature. The signature enables DocuSign to verify that the JWT was created by your application and has not been modified since then. 
The signature is created by joining the base64 URL encoded header and body together with a period and signing that using RS-256 with the private key. After you've encoded your JWT, copy or save it to use in the next step. Now that you have consent and your JWT token, you can exchange it for an access token by making a POST request to the DocuSign Authentication Service API. For this example, I'll use Postman to make the request using the development environment. This request contains two body params. Grant type, which should have the value URN colon IETF colon params colon OAuth colon grant type colon JWT bearer and assertion, which should hold the encoded JWT token that you just created. If the request succeeds, the access token field in the response will contain an access token that you can use to authenticate your DocuSign API calls. Thanks for watching. Please see our authentication guides on the Developer Center for a more detailed walkthrough.